This notion that inflation is a worldwide issue, I, I'm not sure when we stop teaching economics in school, but we are the world's largest GDP. If we have an inflation, the world has inflation because we literally export it. That's just how economics works. Except it doesn't. I'm not sure if Congressman Reschenthaler has ever taken an economics class, but if he did, he might have learned that there isn't a secret lever in the White House to raise gas prices and inflation, nor is there one that opens a trap door to make inflation from the U.S. go all over the world. It's true that the U.S. GDP is the biggest in the world, but globally we make up just under a quarter of the total. And believe it or not, global economics is a little bit more complicated than a sticker on a gas station pump might lead you to believe. I did that. The COVID stimulus bills that prevented our economy from crashing are absolutely playing a big role in the high inflation numbers our country is currently experiencing. But supply chain issues that bring all that stuff we love to buy from all over the world to our doorstep are also a major factor as well. But there's a bigger point here. If we hadn't stayed at home, it would have killed millions more than have already died in this pandemic. And if Congress didn't pass pandemic relief bills, our economy would be in even worse shape than those and those most in need would have, would have to suffer further. This was neatly summed up by Representative Mary Gay Scanlon in her response to Reschenthaler. There are things that we're doing to bring those prices down and economic indicators show that prices are starting to come down. Doesn't deny the real pain that we're all feeling now. Second, which spending would he have eliminated? Would it have been the funding to develop vaccines and therapeutics? Or maybe the funding to keep people in their homes during a pandemic? Would it be the funding that supported small businesses over the last several years? Or, or maybe it's just the Paycheck Protection Funding. I think it's a hollow argument, and I think it's also worth knowing, noting that we're not seeing any alternative solutions. So there's also a lot more going on in Reschenthaler's speech. So let's have a listen to a bit more of it and then do a rapid fire fact check. This notion that inflation is a worldwide issue, I, I'm not sure when we stop teaching economics in school, but we are the world's largest GDP. If we have an inflation, the world has inflation because we literally export it. That's just how economics works. And to blame Ukraine, Ukraine might play a part in this, but who's to blame for Ukraine? It's President Biden. It was the weakness and vacillation, his surrender in Afghanistan that, that emboldened Putin. It was, the, it, it was the vacillation, it was the minor incursion comment that he had that gave Vladimir Putin the green light to invade. Had he just been more resolute in our national security, we could have deterred this invasion. So he owns Ukraine as well. Okay, here we go. And to blame Ukraine, Ukraine might play a part in this. Blaming Ukraine? I'm pretty sure that it was Russia that invaded Ukraine and is stealing wheat, causing food shortages, and withholding natural gas from Europe, causing energy prices to spike all over the world. But who's to blame for Ukraine? It's President Biden. Again, pretty sure it was Russian President Vladimir Putin that started the war. <laughs> it was the weakness and vacillation, his surrender in Afghanistan that, that emboldened Putin it was, the, it, it was the vacillation, it was the minor incursion comment that he had that gave Vladimir Putin the green light to invade. Had he just been more resolute in our national security, we could have deterred this invasion. So he owns Ukraine as well. Okay, so first of all, it was Donald Trump that surrendered to the Taliban when he agreed to withdraw American troops without any enforcement mechanisms to make sure the Taliban doesn't sponsor terrorism in the future. Biden actually delayed the withdrawal by months. It was definitely a mess, but I'm still waiting to hear anybody come up with a cogent description of how they could have done a better job. And by the way, Trump also signed into law a stimulus package worth trillions of dollars, but you never seem to hear that come up when Republicans want to talk about inflation. So if you're going to throw shade, at least get your facts straight.